Now, the industry has evolved a lot in the last 10 years, especially in the last five years. One of the first questions in this industry is how many funds are using this data? And it's actually the wrong question, especially for high dimensional data sets. They started for free publishing lists of originators, which was unheard of because before them, these lists were actually quite valuable. You could be a person or a company that just collects the names of the companies selling these data sets, and you can sell this list for $30,000. Think about that. That's like saying, I know of a company named Bloomberg and a couple of others that are like it. Give me $30,000 and I'll tell you the names of those companies. It's crazy, but that's how it was. Now, it's really important here to understand that most of the alternative data being offered for sale is not being offered by their originator. It's being offered by an intermediary. The reason it's important is because anytime you put more and more levers into the final product and you don't know who's pulling those levers or how, the risk goes up, the accuracy goes down. Panel stabilization. This is an interesting one. You kind of wish the other lens was everything, or at least a random sample that never changed. Right? But it does change. And you can't just divide by the number of users because, say you're collecting data from an app, some financial app, and it starts off in California. And at first, 90% of all the users are in California, 10% are in New York. Over five years, it goes to 50-50. If you have a business on the East Coast that whose sales are flat the whole time, within your data, that company that is East Coast is going to go from being used by 10% of your users to being used, used by 50% of your users. So it's going to look like it had five-fold jump in revenues, when in reality it didn't move at all. That's the paneling problem. A lot of automation can make this. The, the, the answer is, of course, technology, and it's going to happen.